Good morning and welcome to a productive day in the life of a learner developer. Today, I'm going to be learning React with Scrimba, but I'm also going to take time to observe some lesser spotted commuters, hang out at Box Park, and I'm keen to share the advice I wish I knew when I started my coding journey. Let's get into it. I start my day around seven, depending on when my alarm clock app wakes me up. And even though I should probably break the switch, I stay on my phone and start scrolling JavaScript newsletters to see if there are any new front end frameworks I need to learn. Fortunately, today's a kind of slow day. Only 20 frameworks came out since I went to bed. Even still, I'm gonna stick to my plan to brush up on React hooks with Bob Zerol. First though, I need to go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, and tell myself some positive morning affirmations. I will remember my semicolons today. I do not need Stack Overflow. Undefined is a function. Lately, I've been researching how to feel energized throughout the day, and apparently, sunlight in your eyes first thing in the morning is the most important thing you can do to get your mental health steering in the right direction. So I start my day with a walk, where I also listen to a motivational podcast, and because I'm a narcissist who records themselves brushing their teeth, you shouldn't be that surprised to hear I am listening to my own podcast. I think especially when you're starting out, there's this temptation to learn it all, and this FOMO in a way. If you instead focus on building up depth first, all these things transfer no matter what you end up doing. Today, I'm walking a little bit further afield to a terminal Columbia Road, which is very famous for its Sunday flower markets. There are also some really cool coffee shops around here open during the week, but I'm trying to avoid coffee in the first hour of my day to sidestep that 3 p.m. slump. While I take you around Columbia Road, I wanted to explain quickly that I actually learned to code many years ago. Today, I'm reenacting my day in the life as a learner while also brushing up on React hooks and telling you the things I wish I knew when I started my self-taught coding journey. At the end of the day, you can't code 16 hours in a row. That's why recharging with some exercise, sunlight, and an inspirational podcast definitely works. And actually, listening to Ali really motivates me, and I'm itching to write my own code now. So I head home to do some coding of my own. Along the way, I observe some, I think they're called commuters, and I ponder why they don't just learn JavaScript and work from home instead. Now I'm back home, I need to decide my learning targets for the day. In the book, Make Time, I learned about this productivity hack called the Daily Highlights, where you simply ask yourself, what do I want the highlights of my day to be? Today, I want my highlight to be finishing section four of Bob Sorol's Learn React course, and I want to complete all the exercises in that section four. Daily highlights work because it makes you answer what you would do if you could only do one thing. By lowering that bar a little bit, you're less likely to drown in a to-do list and make steady progress instead. At the same time, I also like this idea of setting a stretch goal, something I would like to achieve, but I wouldn't necessarily beat myself up if I don't. At the end of the course, there is a challenge to build your own quiz game with React. I would like to tackle that. To give you some context, this course has four sections and it teaches anyone with a basic knowledge of JavaScript how to build impressive React apps. I already have a little bit of experience with React, except I haven't used it in a while and I'm not confident with this new feature of React called hooks. So I'm skipping to the last section where Bob teaches you how to build an advanced notes app, Tenzi's game, and challenges you to build a quiz like I mentioned, all while teaching the most up-to-date features of React. Now, it would be tempting to lean back and watch this course on 2x, but that isn't really possible at Scrimba unless you're cheating yourself, because every 10 minutes or so, Bob presents an interactive challenge. Jump in and start working on this first feature, which we will be working on in the next screencast. Right now, I'm working through the Notes app alongside Bob. First, you have to update the app to store the notes in the browser's local storage. Then Bob asks you to make it so that the most recently edited notes is always at the top of the list. This involves sorting by a property of an object, which I couldn't quite remember how to do offhand. So much for my morning affirmations. I do not need Stack Overflow. I think I've got the solution working. If we clear the application local storage and reload the page, make a new note, We'll call this note one, and then we'll make a second note, which always appeared at the top, 
and we'll call this, you know, note two. According to Bob's challenge, if I come back here and then update the notes, it should then go up to the top, right? So imagine this is a shopping list or something, and it's all the way at the bottom. You know, we update the shopping list and you get the idea, right? And the way I've done this is by sorting the notes in the sidebar, or at least before passing it to the sidebar component. And I found this way of comparing dates on Stack Overflow. But yeah, let's see how Bob did it and if I went about it the right way. This is really cool because once you have a go, you save your progress and then press play and Bob shows you how he would do it, how he would solve the problem. This is something I definitely wish I had when I was learning from scratch because there's something about struggling to solve the problem and then the relief of watching it done the professional perfect way that just makes it stick. Anyway, I think it's time for some lunch. As it happens, I'm not too far from Box Park, which is like a food market made out of refitted shipping containers. Ragu from Pastor Evangelists and a Diet Coke is my weapon of choice today. But because I'm a total child, apparently, I splatter myself with tomato sauce and to make matters worse, it's raining now as well. Oh, and I just got some on my trousers. I speed walk home to avoid the rain and any judgment from passersby. I feel like I've lost my momentum a bit over lunch, so I set a 25 minute timer. This might look like a Pomodoro, but really I'm just tricking my brain to focus for half an hour. And once it does, I breeze through the second half of the module and I complete my daily highlights. With my highlight done, I still have some time left and I need to set a good example for this vlog. So I decide to start my stretch goal, which to remind you is to complete the quiz solo project. Solo projects are quite a new thing at Scrimber and I haven't done one before and probably you've not heard of them either. So I gave Bob himself a bell to learn what to expect. Bob, hey, good to see you. Hey, Alex. Yeah, good to see you too. Bob, I've been doing your module and I've been loving the challenges. You've definitely been putting me through my paces, but I'm learning a lot. Now I'm at the solo project and I actually haven't done one before. W what is a solo project and what do I need to know before I go into this? A solo project is similar to the challenges that you've been doing on Scrimba, but we're not going to show you the solution anymore. We just give ah. you a Figma design and you have to basically figure it out. Uh, no more hand-holding. Wait, what if I get stuck? Uh, then you're on your own. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. The community is the best place to turn to. We actually don't want you to spin your wheels, so to speak, for too long. Go to Discord, ask people there, and then of course, use your regular resources like Google and whatever else you can find. Any last tips for me before I get started? Give it your best shot. Don't, don't give up. You have learned everything you need in order to do the solo project. So turn to past lessons if you need to, but you've, you've got this. Awesome, man. Thanks a lot. I'm going to crack on, but thanks for taking a minute to get me up to speed. Good luck. Before setting into my last work session of the day, I light a candle and make some tea. Now, this solo project involves fetching data from a third party API, and that's where I choose to start by coding up a fetch call to this API and updating my React application states. I feel like once I get the real data in my app, it will make a lot more sense to code out the components. Unfortunately, things don't go exactly to plan and I fumble around trying to get the use effect hook to work. It's kind of frustrating me, but then I remember Bob's advice. You have learned everything you need. You've got this. I realized that in an earlier module, Bob shows exactly how to do what I need, albeit with a different API endpoints. All the building blocks and explanations were there already. I think I managed to figure out how to use async with user fact by following one of Bob's previous modules. That came in really clutch, but my code I don't think is working at all. So I have this question state variable and to test if it's being updated, what I'm going to do is just try and put the length of that array into the uh, heading here, because if the data is being fetched successfully, then that number should increment. It's not. To kind of get to the bottom of this, I'm going to go for the oldest debugging trick in the book, which is a handy dandy console.log. So let's see if fetch questions is being executed. Apparently not. Let's see if the effect is being executed. And when I do this, I like to put the function name or sometimes just a message like trace in there. All right, so we can see that trace is being executed there. So the use effect is being called, but this is not. Probably because I'm calling the function in the wrong place. Way to go, Booker. There we go, we expected that. 
this time, yes, the fetch questions function is being executed, but the value is still zero. So I'm just going to go through this one step at a time. Does the response come back? It looks like the response comes back as an object that's pretty promising. Instead of poking into that too much, I'm just going to skip ahead one step and trust the JSON comes back. Uh, yeah, that looks good so far. I'm pretty assured that because the results object exists here, that this destructuring assignment is going to work. So let's see what happens to the questions object. And in fact, now I think about it, I'm not even calling set questions, which is kind of obvious. This is going to set the state variable, but I did just realize, I think, why this isn't going to work. And it's because I'm calling this local variable questions when the state variable is also called questions. So let's call this questions map. It's not a good name, but we're going to make it work. Then we're going to make it right. And then probably not in this case, but the saying goes, make it fast. Let's have a look and see if this works. Yes, perfect. I was kind of scared for a second there, but that delay is because the array is initially empty. But while we wait for the network request to come back and the state to get updated, there's that little delay, which is just fine in this case. Awesome. Let's uh, make it right and clean this up a little bit. With the data in my application state, I feel confident to flesh out the structure of my components. And I realize I'm reaching that point of tiredness where I wonder, where am I going to stop? And actually, the decision is kind of made for me when I run into a problem I can't solve right now. This API does not return normal symbols like quotes. It returns like HTML entities and then React has trouble rendering that. I convinced myself that maybe if I'm lucky, the answer will reveal itself in the morning. OK, so it's currently uh, 20 past 10. That's pretty much my day. I've got some progress on the solar project it's not perfect but we got to the point of fetching data from the api and you can see every time i refresh the page it shows a little loading indicator and then it shows the questions and the answers there is a slight issue where these html entities i think they're called basically they're encoded and instead of being interpreted by the browser directly i think react might be escaping them so that you can't get xss attack which is where a response has some like code that a user inputted that could be executed for a malicious reason i'm learning I don't know for sure. And there's a couple of ways I think we could solve this. One of them is by using dangerously set in a HTML with React, but that's not something I really want to get into right now. Well, there you have it. That is a day in my life as a learner React developer. I think we covered some good ground with Bob Zerol's course, as well as tackling a bit of the solo project. Maybe I would have liked to have made more progress, but there we go. There's something to look forward to tomorrow. I hope you've learned alongside me as we've kind of tackled things like hooks and working with APIs and promises and things like that. And yeah, maybe you enjoyed watching me make fun of myself as I go about my day as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, please give this video a big thumbs up, especially if you want to see more like this. Subscribe to the Scrimba YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my podcast, but also be sure to check out these videos on the screen right now, which I think you will find interesting. Until next time.